Welcome to video number 12 in using iTrain. My name is Bob. This is a slight change to that which was announced at the end of the last video. In this video we'll see how iTrain effortlessly handles multiple instant routes. We'll see how instant routes can be used to perform an auto reverse maneuver and we will split a loco from a rake of wagons and then reattach a different loco. All whilst using offline simulation so that you can recreate it and follow along at your own pace. Welcome back. We are where we left off from the previous video with the layout from Tutorial 10 loaded here. In the previous video we created an instant route using a single train. In this video we'll look at creating multiple instant routes that will be running together and seeing how they are handled by iTrain. We will start with a clean layout and we will be using the layout in offline mode so not connected to the physical layout just like the previous video. Let's start by placing the first train DB car here onto the west block. So we will click and drag it onto the block. We can think of this as being equivalent to selecting the physical train from your storage drawer and then placing it onto your physical track. When we place it on the physical track we normally place it so that the loco is at the front with the wagons behind it and pointing in the direction of intended travel like this. And you will recall that the first thing we should do after placing the train on the switchboard is to check that the orientation of the train is the same as that on our physical layout. The easiest way to do that is to put our train into forward gear by selecting it in the throttle and then checking the direction arrow actually on the switchboard here. And what we can see is that the direction arrow is pointing this way and we are in forward gear so the way we visualize the orientation on the switchboard here is like this with the loco this side and the wagons behind it which is opposite to the orientation in the physical layout so we need to shift and then click on the direction arrow here to flip the eye train orientation around Let's do the same with the steam train, DP pole. So we we'll click on it from the overview and drag it onto S4. Again, when we place it on the physical layout, we would normally have it with the loco at the front and the wagons behind, like this. So to confirm the orientation between the physical and the switchboard, we will put the train into forward gear and then look at the direction arrow here which in this case is pointing in the direction of travel that we want. So the physical orientation and that of eye train are the same and there's no need to flip the direction arrow here. Right, let's create the first instant route so we'll take DB car from the west siding into siding S3 and then we select route. We see that the route has been reserved, the throttle has increased and now because we're in offline mode iTrain is waiting for us to double click on the feedback here to start the actual route. But before we do that let's see if iTrain will allow us to create a simultaneous route and we'll create an instant route for DB pole down to the S1 siding and we'll click on the route. 
Well, it doesn't appear that any reservation has been made. The track has not turned orange at all. But if we look at the overview window, we can see that a destination of S1 has been created. But will iTrain remember that this instant route has been created? And will it start it automatically once the first route has completed? Let's see, we'll double click to start this route off. We click, the route has gone on into this siding and yes, it has released the route now and created the new route and reserved the path. So we then just have to double click on this icon here to move the train into the siding. And it appears that iTrain did remember it and did allow the route to progress once the first route had finished. So excellent. Let's increase the difficulty. Let's add a third vehicle and see how iTrain handles that. And this time we'll use a locomotive rather than a train. So we'll go down to the control grid here, click in the control grid and then press Alt and the down arrow to add some more throttles. And then in this tab, we'll select the locomotive tab. And from the drop down menu, we'll select the D6510. This loco isn't from the demo layout. It's one that we created from an earlier tutorial. It's a class 33 diesel which is capable of moving in either direction. And remember, this is the locomotive only. It has no wagons. So we'll put it onto the switchboard by dragging it onto the west block. Now, even though this is a single diesel locomotive and capable of traveling in either direction, we still need to verify that the orientation on the switchboard matches that of the physical layout. So we perform the usual routine of first putting it into forward gear and then seeing if the direction arrow is pointing in the intended direction. In this case it is not, so we'll press the shift and click on the arrow to flip it around. Right, so we will create three instant routes this time, but with a little twist. For the first route, we'll take the class 33 and move it into the east block. For the second route, we'll take DB car and give it the destination of S1, where DB pole is currently located. And for the third route, we'll move DB pole to S4. The challenge for iTrain is how it handles the second route where we're asking DB car to go into a siding that is already occupied. Will iTrain be intelligent enough to recognize that and instead action the third route to move DB pole onto S4 and then will iTrain remember that it still needs to move DB car into S1? Let's find out. So first we will route the class 33 to the east block and we will select route. The route has been assigned and reserved and the throttle has increased and it's waiting for us to action the feedback. And we can see that the destination has been assigned in the overview window. Let's create the second route. So we'll drag and drop DB car into S1. And we will select shunt for this operation because we're going in reverse. And we can see that the destination has been accepted. And for the third route, We'll drag DB pole onto S4 
And again, this will be a shunt operation. So we select shunt. And we can see that for this one, the destination has also been accepted. So here we go. Let's see what happens. Let's start off the class 33 by double clicking in the feedback. It's moved into this block. And yes, iTrain was intelligent enough to know that it needed to move dbpol out and into this block to free it up. So we can double click on that to start that block. And perfect. It is now set dbcar on its route into S1. So we can double click on the icon here and allow the train to move into the block. And there we have multiple instant routes performed with simple drag and drops. Here's another neat thing we can do with instant routes, auto reversing. Let's say we want to move DB car into the adjacent siding here. We just simply click and drag it onto the siding and click on shunt. And now iTrain will start to perform a maneuver out to this block. We double click on it to action it. And then when that route completes there, it will automatically reverse the train into this other siding. So we double click to complete the route and then the train moves into there. Automatic reversing. Another neat little feature. And here's one final maneuver as a little taster of things to come. DB car is in this block, it's in reverse gear and it's pointing in this direction. So we know the orientation of the train is with the loco at the front and the wagons behind it. If we right click on the block, we can go to properties and then to the train properties. And here we can see that the train consists of the locomotive DB30 and then this wagon list. What we will do is split the loco off of the train and move the loco into siding S3, leaving the wagons behind. And the way we do that is to right click and hold on the block and then we can go to split train, select DB30. We're now showing the icon showing DB30 split from the train here can see these two bars. Down here we can see that iTrain has created a new train called DB360 which is the locomotive. So we can now click and drag that across to S3 and route it there. We wait for the throttle to increase before we double click on the feedback. If you click too early you'll get an error. So we double click on this, that will route the loco across into this siding. And then if we look at the properties for the train here now, what we'll see is that it just consists of the wagons. And we can also reattach a loco to the wagons. Let's use a different loco. Let's move the class 33 onto these carriages or wagons here. We do that by shunting the train into this block. So let's do that. We'll click and drag that into here. Press shunt. Now we see that the route has been accepted, but nothing has actually happened. And the reason is, is that we need to make a setting change in this particular block here. So we'll stop the route and cancel it by clicking on the red cross. 
And then if we go into the properties for the block here, we'll right click on it, into properties, and this time select the block. And now we're in the block properties window. Down here in shunt, we have this option called allow shunt in occupied block. So we click on that, click OK. And now if we do the same again, we drag the loco over to here, click on shunt. We wait for the throttle to increase, then we can double click. And now the loco is transferring into this block and we can see we've got this symbol showing the loco in black and the carriages behind it, which are currently uncoupled. We then right click and hold and then select join trains. We click on that now and now this becomes one train again. And if we click on the properties, right click properties, go down to the train, we can now see that the train consists of DB6510 and the wagon list. And there we have it, instant routes, temporary routes that can be quickly created through simple drag and drop maneuvers. Let's quickly save that as tutorial number 12. So we just change this to 12 and OK. Now things were happening quite quickly as we went through this. So it's difficult to see exactly what is going on. Understanding how instant route works will give us a good foundation for when we move on to the more sophisticated train routes. So in the next video, we'll take a closer look at how instant routes work and we'll see how we can figure out how iTrain knows where a train is in a block. And to help us do that, we'll be using some new instant route features that were added in iTrain version 5.0.5. Hope to see you then. Take care.